<laughs> All right, so I married an axe murder. Came out thirty years ago. Mike Myers coming off Wayne's World one and two, still on SNL. He was a guy. He's season ticket status, I think. This movie came out and it bombed. I didn't understand it. I loved it. Here's what happened though. Over the years, as the years pass, Mike Myers really doesn't make another good movie after what, 2002? That's the last Austin Powers movie. Yeah. yeah. Are we counting Shrek? Uh, I guess we could. But the Austin Powers stuff happens and he kind of becomes known for that. And then this becomes this tucked away thing that then becomes the most rewatchable movie he ever made. So right. how did this happen? Um, it's a really good question. I wonder if it would have ever gotten that cult status if he didn't make Austin Powers, but that there's something ironic about that because this is the last time he ever made a movie in which he played basically Mike Myers. Yeah. And he doesn't really like to play Mike Myers. And he's much more comfortable playing characters. And this is just a guy that, that he's playing. He's just, the, I have a lot of questions about what this guy's life is. So many questions. <laughs> um, but he doesn't, he never again leaned into it, you know, whether it was Wayne Algar or uh, Shrek or Austin Powers or Fat guru. Bastard or The Love Guru or the guys from the Pentaveret or any of, I mean, he's literally never played a normal guy since. Inglorious Bastards, 54. Like, think of all of the movies that he's made. Bohemian Rhapsody. Never played just a dude. Well, when you like, say normal guy, it's like everyone, he's got a wig on or fake teeth that's what I mean. or some accent. Like, he's closer to Andy Serkis than he is to like Eddie Murphy now, mm -hmm. where it's like every movie he did was like this complete and total physical transformation. A character that is like, he doesn't show up and is like, I'll be funny. It's like, I know I've created an entirely new person that I'm going to inhabit for this. And this movie is the, the sort of like X and Y graph of like, his trajectory up and starting to feel himself and being like, I think I'm going to rewrite this script, but a real director, like a screenplay, like, you know, a, a cast, a good supporting cast and actually a story. I like when Mike Myers is Mike Myers. He would do it on SNL too every yeah. once in a while. And I, I don't know. I, I almost wonder if this movie, cause it bombed, it psyched him out. And that was it. He's like, I'm out. I'm never doing that again. I'm never playing myself. I need to hide behind some sort of gimmick. And that's it. Don't ask me to be me. You know what I've thought about a lot revisiting this movie was the love story in Wayne's World, which is when I saw Wayne's World, I didn't, Greer. Yeah, I didn't think that that is where they would take that character. Like there's nothing <laughs> in the sketches in SNL that would indicate he that he would, he would yeah. make a love story. But Wayne's World works so well. And actually he and Tia Carrera were great together. Those some of that, some of the best stuff in that movie. So I think maybe he thought, maybe I am going to be a kind of leading man rom-com lead. And so he leans into it really directly with this. And, it, and since it doesn't work, you never see him try it again. It would have been cool to see him try it again. Well, it's fascinating to think about, I'm not going to do casting what ifs, but the people who had been a, up and around for the role of Charlie in, you know, before, before Mike Myers got the part. And those are all pretty typical, like, uh, leading men, leading men with comic abilities, right? But yeah. not like comic geniuses mm -hmm. who are creating a new character every time and like inhabiting this person. It's basically, he's way more close to Sasha Baron Cohen and some of the Eddie Murphy stuff where he's doing, you know, Nutty Professor and things like that than he is like Chevy Chase, you know? He's a weird guy, mm -hmm. but yet vibes with the leading lady. And he did it with Tia Carrera. He did it in this movie. I think him and Nancy Travis have great chemistry. I feel like he did it with uh, with Elizabeth Hurley and with Heather Graham. Mm -hmm. Beyonce, not as much, because I'm not sure Beyonce's an actor. But there's something silly about where it's like, I actually believe that these two people would like each other. And he's so silly. And he's bringing out this funny side for the other person. Yeah. He's a good flirt. Right? He's good yeah, at flirting. That's, with, yeah, that's a good way to put yeah. it. Yeah, he's a good flirt. And it's weird that he abandoned that, too. I don't really understand what happened to him. And it felt like it started to get weird with 54. And when he made that choice, and I, I kind of like 54. I thought he was good in it. When he made that choice, I thought, oh, is he going to go this way and become like this kind of weird dramatic actor? But then he did two more Austin kinda Powers Jim movies. Jim Carrey, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then he did the Love Girl, and then it just seems like he lost the narrative. He did the Cat in the Hat, and that was one that really did him in, I think. Because he was supposed to make the Dieter movie. Yeah. And then he got into a legal dispute with Universal. And so to right. pay them back, basically, he did the cat in the hat. And that movie bombed and people hated it. 
And so then he was like, he's not a romantic comedy lead. He's not like a kid's movie star. He's already made three Austin Powers movies. Love Guru doesn't work. Like, where do you go? Yeah. And it sounds like he's a little bit more trouble than it's worth sometimes on set. Very controlling, it sounds like. When it got to the point when he was doing the gong show and makeup and not acknowledging that it was him hosting the gong show, I, I, that was when it was, it was like, this is getting now weird. Yeah. 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 What always, happened to this guy? I've always been fascinated by him, though. I do think that movies need people like this. It's yeah. the same reason I love Sasha Baron Cohen, where people are just like, I'm not acknowledging the joke here <laughs> like yeah. i'm just i'm doing what i'm doing this is my world that i've created and he's kind of created worlds over and over again he's he's done he's been more successful than arguably any self-styled comedy star of the last 35 years you could make the case that just shrek and austin powers alone that's bigger than anything that's happened that's bigger than jim carrey bigger than will ferrell yeah. bigger yeah. than any of those people so it's hard hard to quibble with but this one is such an outlier from all that other stuff you can also give him that 15 year run starting when he joins us now all the way through the early 2000s. That's like, you know, about as good as you're going to do. But for some reason, the next 20 years became the bigger part of the narrative. Like mm -hmm. what happened to him? Why did he lose the steering wheel? And, it, and, but I, I actually think that run he had is underrated now because especially the SNL stuff, like he, he was one of the better cast members, I think, in oh, the history yeah. of the show. And I don't think he gets mentioned like that anymore because it was like, oh, he just did Wayne's World and the other one. He did, he had a lot of good stuff that he did. I think he got, he felt too in love with the coffee, take lit, coffee talk lady. Mm -hmm. He felt too in love with that Simon. Like he would just get super weird, almost like a little too weird where people need to rein him in. But I thought he did yeah, but every, a bunch of good stuff. Every generation kind of gets like their their <laughs> SNL cast. I think Sean's probably a little bit more Sandler Farley generation. But he, yeah, My, but he's, Myers and he's Carvey there, was though. when I started watching. But yeah, yeah Myers yeah, was yeah. like, Myers and Carvey were like, I, that was the period of time when I would be like, mom, can I, I'm staying up to watch this to one, you know, like. Yeah, Seth always talked about how Myers was like, he loved the 10 to 1 sketch, the, the sketch that got super weird, and that would be like the one that he... Shows, yeah. Yeah. So he he becomes, when his movies hit, that sets off the whole SNL guys going to the movies yeah. thing that, that kind of launches it. But he stayed on the show, and he probably stayed on the show, I would say two years too long, considering what his profile was. And in the middle of this, he puts out this movie that... Um, I had really high hopes for, and then it just kind of came and went. I think some of that though is how loaded 1993 was, which mm -hmm. we've talked about in the past. Just an amazing movie year. There was just so many choices. And you also knew if you didn't catch them in time, they were going to be in Blockbuster at some point. So um, one of the other things I love about this movie, it's, I think one of the best San Francisco movies. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like San Francisco is yeah. a co-star of this movie. And I wrote down like San Francisco movies. I like 48 hours is the king ax murder, Zodiac, the rock, basic instinct, bullet, bullet, Mrs. Doubtfire, Pacific Heights, dirty, Harry body snatchers and the game. Great. Where list. they all just like use the city. It's such a cool city to shoot. You got Hills, you got the water, you can see Alcatraz. It's kind of creepy, but there's also parts of San Francisco that look like you're in Europe. Mm -hmm. That scene he's in with Nancy Travis on their first date, it looks like he's in like Rome. Yeah, where they're eating a hot dog. Yeah, yeah and yeah. they just, they use it really, really nice. So I I think San Francisco is my favorite movie location place. And I say that as somebody who loves Boston. We were in San Francisco together a few years ago, me and you, and you were very romantic about the city. I you love were like, San I love Francisco. it here. Yeah, I remember that very well. This was the best San Francisco time. And I had some friends that moved out there. In the early but it was, 90s? Pre Silicon Valley, that it was there was still a coolness to it. Um, a lot of young people were moving there to Portland or places like that, but it it uh, you could still live there for cheap. You could get like either like a floor of a house or you could rent, you know, what apartment, or whatever. But you could live like three, four to a place, and it was realistic. Yeah. They did the real world. I think that was the third real world season. Mm -hmm. Or second, second. That's the puck season. No, no, right? it's New York, LA, San Francisco. Oh, so the it's third the one. Puck, yeah. But it's the puck, the puck season, right? Pedro, yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so that was happening. Plus, like Basic Instinct, this movie, like that. This was like a run of San Francisco movies, and it just seemed like the coolest place. I always felt like it was like Boston yeah. It's West. interesting. It's like it's a driving city. Like in the movies, it's a driving city. It's like this hilly city. Every it's a good chase city seems real, but then the view seems incredible. Yeah, 
It photographs beautifully. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah. it'll be like a normal, like kind of beat up apartment of a cop, and then he'll look out the window and he sees the bay. In yeah. The right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like a nooks and crannies city. Yeah, too. that's There's a good like way a of putting it. Little small porn part. There's like a little the weird like little Jack Kerouac. Zone, yeah, <laughs> Kerouac part. Yeah, they. <laughs> Uh, Chinatown's amazing. Yeah. Like Chinatown is in San Francisco is one of the best movie locations. There would be is. an amazing late career pivot for you to just be like the Anthony Bourdain of red light districts across America. <laughs> <laughs> the combat zone with Bill Simmons. <laughs> yeah. Sticky floors with Bill Simmons. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about tassels. Um, yeah, the, a lot of those movies I listed all came out in like a four year span. Yeah. Like even Pacific Heights, good San Francisco. Movie. Oh yeah. You know, and there's always like, you could shoot stuff where things are tilted. This is also the time of a uh, full house, which is there's like a full house shot in yeah. this movie where you see those, that row of houses. And that, that was probably the first San Francisco TV show I watched. It's weird that San Francisco is so different now where, where it was 25, 30 years ago. And then there's a lot of reasons for that. But like, cause I feel like Boston has improved in a lot of ways. It's mm -hmm. a city that made it nicer. They added the seaport, they had the big dig. Like it's Mac. pretty clean. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> San Francisco feels like it's in shambles mm -hmm. compared to where it was 30 years ago. You've been ago. really involved in the legislative <laughs> yeah, work there. I've you been know, actively of, trying yeah, to get crime people scene, yeah. recalled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah people, I haven't like, been to San Francisco in like 15 years. The so. fact that the Nordstrom at the bottom of the hill is just, they shut it down, that's like fucking amazing to me. Yeah. Like, that would yeah. be like if they shut down Faneuil Hall in Boston. Yeah. It was just like, yeah, Faneuil Hall's gone. Um, so anyway, it's, it made me uh, nostalgic. So What's Castle. your favorite movie city? Well, that's a good question. I mean, New York has the most movies that I love that are set yeah, there. Yeah, that's like cheating, though. Well, I, you know, you asked the question. Yeah. If I, what if I was like <laughs> Cleveland? I certainly love the film set in Cleveland. Venice. <laughs> I think New Orleans is good as a movie location. Yeah, but I don't like when they set things in New Orleans, but they're not in New Orleans. Like where they like, cheat. Like where they basically no, they shoot things in and around Louisiana, but then they don't. Like they're like, this is actually Chicago. It's Shreveport. Yeah. yeah. Um, Miami's I, a good one. Miami's, Miami's some good great. ones. No, that's for you guys. That's 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 CR and, and BS right there. But it's like oh, out it's of sight. Our, yeah. Sure. Bad yeah, boys. that's a good one. You guys are just thinking about mojitos. Like, that's all you're thinking about. <laughs> My advice. London's good. London. I, I like, like Chicago London. a lot. Chicago's Chicago. had some good ones. Yeah. But it's weird that cities have runs. Like, Chicago had that, like, early 80s through the mid-80s run of just, like, a million movies for some reason that we all love. And then San Francisco had this run from, like, basically late 80s through the mid-90s. You basically like need of... directors who are probably, like, affectionate for that place. Like, a lot of the Chicago movies... I don't know. I mean, like, Andrew Davis, who made The Fugitive and stuff like that, like, really liked Chicago. So he set a bunch of movies there. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, you get directors who are like, it's important for me to have it shot, like set here. Yeah. The, you mentioned two Fincher movies on the list, Zodiac and The Game. It's like, he's from the Bay. Yeah. So that's why and he likes like, Mindhunter is basically, like, a lot of the prisons that they do in Mindhunter are all in Northern California. It's definitely his I feel turf. like this movie is done with the love and care of somebody who like really likes San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They're mm -hmm. like, let's go here. Let's go to this spot. We'll do this. We'll use this apartment. Let's go to this location, which I really appreciate. It's directed by Tommy Schlamy. Yeah. We met Tommy once. Remember yeah, that? We yeah, we did. Um, who became a pretty legendary TV director. Oh, yeah. yeah. Huge. He did not, uh, stay in the movie side, but he was like ER West Wing. Um, he, he was like the main like, West Wing almost guy. Almost every West, yeah. not everyone, but yeah. like a lot but of But he them. created like a, style of yeah. TV show in a way. Obviously with the writers who wrote those shows, but the way that a lot of shows look now, he kind of invented. Yeah. Like the, the steady cam following characters talking is like, that's his thing. Which was a huge issue on this right. set is that Myers was like, do not move this camera. Yeah. Should we start talking about that? I think we should. Um, this was when the Myers reputation begins. Yeah. That he was a little prickly. Yeah. A little, little egotistical. Um, one of the things you mentioned is um, he had, according to uh, one of the stories, he had this thing called Lay Down Tracks, One-Eyed Jacks. If he saw that Tommy Schlamy had set up tracks or a dolly for a movie camera shot, he would just go back to his trailer until they removed the tracks. <laughs> he wouldn't even, like, talk about it. He would just be like, I'm going to go back to my trailer and just wait until... <laughs> 
they changed how they were going to shoot the thing. Sounds like a delight. Well, he has a very basic, like, you should put the camera right in front of me and shoot the joke, right? Right. Yeah. 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 So somebody who worked on the movie said that Myers had this philosophy of, if you want the joke to be funny, you have to shoot the actor directly when he's delivering the joke to you so you can see both eyes. And that was why he said, lay down tracks, one eye jacks. Chris Ryan feels the same way. No, that's, I know. A, that's how you do million dollar picks. <laughs> like staring right in the camera <laughs> so I can get my jokes off. Um, you also, you wouldn't come out of your trailer until we did Black Hat on the show. That's right. something I heard. <laughs> I don't, the Meyer stuff, there's been a lot of writing about him. I don't know how much of it is he was just genuinely a weirdo and how much of it was him cultivating mm. the artiste thing with yeah. what he was doing. Because um, the fact that he backed out of the Sprockets thing was crazy. But really seemed genuine where he was, he was basically like, this idea is not good enough. I don't want to do it. That philosophy falls apart when you do like the love girl five years later. That's the part. I, don't, I can't wrap my head around it. It seems like he it was just like going through some stuff. nobody could wrap their head around love guru, which, yeah. you know, if you just say he's like reclusive and doesn't make anything for the last 25 years, mm-hmm. then... We're probably having a different kind of conversation about him, but instead he was like, here's what I've been working on. And everybody was like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's a weird one. I think he, I'm sure I said this when we talked about Austin Powers, but he idolizes Peter Sellers. Yeah. Peter Sellers famously so difficult on films, famously would disappear behind costumes and wigs and mustaches, but was a genius. And people were like, you know what? We'll just accept it. We'll just deal with it because what you get on screen, Dr. Strangelove being there, whatever, is so worth it that we'll deal. But he also arrived at a time where, like, there there was more money on the line. You know what I mean? Like, Austin Powers was a billion-dollar operation, ultimately. Yeah. So I think it, it's harder to justify. It's also funny because in it, there's, there's the 93 part where it's, like, you would still get magazine articles or newspaper articles that were just like immediately after a movie had come out and people being like, I didn't really have a good time making this, Mm -hmm, (laughs) you know? mm -hmm. And also in the intervening years, I think even Tommy Schlammy and like some of the other people have been like, it was complicated and a little bit difficult, but it wasn't that bad. You know what I mean? Like he is very specific. And if you're going to work with him, you got to kind of know what he's going to do. I think that this movie actually works because of that tension though, is because there's still like, a cool setting, you know, and some atmospheric stuff and some interesting, like, zags. And Tommy Schlammy's doing, like, a San Francisco movie, like you're saying. But then you also have the Mike Myers part. It's something that I wish more comedies had, which is that it has real, competent filmmaking. Like, yeah, it, the movie is very slick, very smooth. It's it well looks done. really, yeah. it looks yeah. really good. You know, it's got energy. It's got pace. The music is great. Like, it's not just, like, a thrown together SNL sketch. It's not just the Apatow guys kind of riffing for two and a half hours. It With is like one slow mo walking yes. scene. The, That's like they're <laughs> like, right, right. The, like you can make the case that the the flaw of the movie, even though I really like this about it and it's what attracted to me in the first place, is actually Mike Myers. Like Mike Myers, like doing bits and do, being like hello in like <laughs> yeah. a, in a scene where you'd be like, what? No one would ever do that. <laughs> he does it. I had that in What Stage the Worst. Yeah. He does it three different times. Yeah. And it's like, that didn't work the first time. <laughs> it's really weird. Um, I mean, I, I, I love Mike Myers more than I love the movie, so I'm, I'm, I'd am i rather have Mike Myers than a, a slightly better movie with a less yeah. comic-centric actor, but there's something weird and frictive going on here that you can feel even while you're watching the movie. Most difficult Canadians, Mike Myers, Dylan Brooks. Are there any other ones? That's it? Those are the only two? I'm sure there's a hockey player we're not thinking of. Yeah, it's a problem. I mean, R.J. Barrett's hard on my heart, you know? Yeah, that's true. Um, R.J. Barrett's like, no no lateral movement or I don't come out of my trailer. (laughs) R.J. Barrett is how I feel the way Mike Myers feels and so I married an ex-murderer watching him play. I'm like, is this guy going to kill me right now? I watched this movie twice in two days because the first time I was having such a good time with some of the scenes that I wasn't even thinking about it critically. So I had to watch it again. It's a quintessential rewatchable in that it's way. It's so, yeah. Because the, the, the reason why this movie gained steam as the 90s went along was just these like signature scenes. And the first 30 minutes are about as good as you're going to do for a comedy. And then it kind of has to go through the whole, oh, we have this black comedy horror type piece. And, you know, I don't think the last 20 minutes is great, but the fu- the fact that there's just like, hey, Phil Hartman's going to be in yeah. this for two minutes. 
Michael Richards at the peak of Seinfeld Throwing powers. Throwing 101. He's just, pop, yeah, he's just <laughs> popping in for three minutes. Charles Grodin's here for no reason at all. Stephen Wright. Stephen Wright's going to yeah. fly a plane. Like, you know what I don't it feel is? like movies do this anymore. But this is the thing. is like This is basically singles done as a Monty Python episode or as yeah. a Saturday Night Live mm. episode where there's like 15, 20 minutes of Harriet and Charlie. And then they just have like a weird sketch in the middle. Mm-hmm. And like they went to like funny people and were like, what would you do in this scene? Or what about this idea? And they just have like five minute scenes that are almost like interstitials throughout the movie. Yeah, but they they make sense in the movie, which I think yeah. there were a lot of other movies from this era where they were just Saturday Night Live sketches kind of patched together. But this and has, in this one, they yeah. all everybody, even the Michael Richards scene, which is bizarre, but it kind of makes sense in the framework of the movie. It pushes the story along. Yeah. He and learns Alan something, Arkin. Yeah. I didn't mention Alan Arkin, yeah. who's in multiple scenes, but As the uh, nice sergeant. <laughs> yeah, there, there's like real thought and care put into why these people are in the movie, what they're going to do. And I don't know if like the equivalent was now and it was some actor where they built the movie around one guy, but then it's like Bill Hader's in it for two minutes, Mm -hmm. you know? And then Fred Armisen's in for one minute and oh my God, there's Kristen, Kristen Wiig for 90 seconds. Like we'd be like, what is this movie? They don't, just don't do it this way anymore. It's a good call. I actually wish that was the case with more stuff. I just don't think people are creative enough yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I think what That's I... That's ro- one of the reasons we love Superbad. Like, fucking yeah. Bill Hader's in it for, what, two scenes? Three yeah. scenes? Yeah. But it, w- I read that those people are all in this movie because they wanted to work with Mike Myers. Yeah. And I, I yeah. assume that's true. Yeah. Which speaks to what how he was much cachet he had yeah. at that point. I mean, yeah. Alan Arkin is like, I, I want to be in a movie with that guy. In 1993, Alan Arkin was Alan Arkin. You know, it's pretty crazy. I, he's just always at least an A minus Alan Arkin. Arkin. Uh, yeah, uh, like A minus is the floor for Alan Arkin. Legend. Where do you stand on the in laws? Uh, oh, we did. A, it was part of a movie swap episode we did on the show, the big, big picture earlier this year. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love it. My dad's best friend, Roy Anderson, had this whole thing about how The In Laws was the greatest movie of all time. And he watched it like it's every so six months. Funny. So funny. He was like, this is the perfect movie. And he would just say, he was like a, like a Scientologist yeah. about it. When he's losing his shit and they're doing the run on the tarmac, that's like the funniest thing I've ever seen yeah. in a movie. He's, it's great. Out our, and all the way through Little Miss Sunshine. Incredible yeah. career for him. Well, this movie, $20 million budget, made $11.5 million. Roger Ebert, like begrudgingly gave it two and a half stars. He said it was a mediocre movie with a good one trapped inside, wildly signaling to be set free. Picked it apart. I don't think Rod, Rod's a big story guy. I don't know if he loved the story. <laughs> well, he, I, I wanted to know what you guys thought of the point that he made in the review, which was that he thought that the family, and I'm sure we'll spend a lot of time on the Scottish family, that would that that was the movie. Yeah. That if he had if he had made that the movie, then you would have had something great, and that all of this business with you know Harriet and Charlie and the murders and everything it was not as. It does feel like they're two separate movies, and it feels like one is like a vestige of the older version of the script, and the other is like Mike Myers exploring like what this guy's life in San Francisco would be like if he had this Scottish family. I uh, I would have loved to have seen that. I. I don't know if split screen technology was quite where we needed it to be. I think to that do a was the biggest problem. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The other problem was uh, I hated the Colonel with his <laughs> wee beady eyes. <laughs> he puts an addictive chemical in his chicken. <laughs> the dad, it, the dad. Well, we'll do it in rewatchables. But the dad's first scene is like one of my favorite four minutes. It's I think unreal. of the nineties. Yeah, so funny. it is like just like an A plus plus. The opening's awesome. The coffee shop. The we, we, we should talk about following the through yeah. the mug. This yeah. is a sneaky like, I like the mid nineties. People just tried shit. It's They're a like, 90s, you know what? Fuck it. But We're it's also like it. a nineties time capsule. Yeah. You know, this is sort of like the real central perk. You know. Right. Well, I was going to talk about this later, but there is like this is the first wave of coffee house shit because singles had it the year before. Friends is a year later, but. I was Dunkin' Donuts really until 93, 94. I don't, I don't even think any coffee house was in Boston until- The first time you until... went into a coffee house where you're like, you guys think you're better than me? <laughs> well, I'll tell you this, we didn't have them in Boston, but we had them, you know, you go to San Francisco and be like, what's this place? It's mm-hmm. like a bar, but now, what it's was coffee? the bookstore next to Newberry though that had the coffee shop in it? Oh man. That place I think is still there. It is. Yeah, I didn't, I wasn't a fan of that place. Really? I was a D&D guy. Okay. Why do you have to choose? 
That was just the D&D and guy. You wouldn't it's hang like, out that's at the my other place. side cafe or anything? Like, you weren't, like, you were no, just... No, I was just like Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> just walking by being like, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't understand it. And then uh, eventually uh, they kind of beat you down. Is it like, they... this is the real America? Like, Dunkin' Donuts? This is how we really do it? Like what's like Dunkin' Donuts. That's okay. what I was used to. All right, cool. Then I expanded my horizon. Did you do a lot up. of coffee shops? No, and, and I didn't ice drink. cold Ethica? No, it, when we were, uh... When we were just taking a break, you were like, I bet you're a big uh, beat poet guy sitting in the coffee shop. Like, I didn't start drinking coffee till like 2009. So, no. I, really? Yeah. Yeah. Now it's, it's a huge part of my life. It's, what Ringer staff member do you think could have been a beat poet guy 30 years ago? Austin Gale. Yeah, definitely. I was exactly Austin where Gale. I was going. Yeah. yeah. But just very fast poetry. Yeah. <laughs> Speed poetry. EPA. <laughs> <laughs> Jalen Waddle waddles down the field. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that should be we should launch an NFL beat poetry yeah. podcast. That sounds like great. a really All good right. idea. <laughs> Write that down. Yeah. <laughs> Fandle so, got a new idea for you guys. <laughs> you better be sitting down. Uh, Same day. Parlay. <laughs> <laughs> um so the cappuccino, we fought all the way through, and it goes to Myers. And Myers goes, there seems to be a mistake. I ordered the large cappuccino. It just and we're off. We're going. Hello. <laughs> We had, we had the fair commitment established. He's talking about his girlfriends. He says she smelled like soup. <laughs> she smelled like beef vegetable soup. <laughs> and then it has I the woman poem. Yeah. Now, like Jeff Chow was like, oh, that movie, um, it's funny except for the beat poetry. I'm like, I am completely the, the in the opposite camp. The beat poetry is so I love funny. the beat poetry. Yeah. He could have thrown in three more. She was a thief. You gotta <laughs> believe. <laughs> she stole my heart and my cat. Um... <laughs> Is it time to start asking questions about Charlie? Or do you want to wait? Let's wait. Because okay. we don't... Yeah, I have a million questions. Hey, Jane. Get me off this crazy thing called love. <laughs> I'm kind of into beat poetry. Oh, I think yeah. I would have had a good time. Maybe you should host the beat I, poet football pod. We could do it. Maybe we have some space in the Spotify <laughs> office. True. We do have a little stage. That's a great opening scene. Then we get to go to his parents' house, and it's just, it goes to a whole another level. Yeah. The Scottish Wall of Fame, which I wrote down, we'll talk about later. Okay. The Bay City Rollers. Incredible. <laughs> Myers leaves, and the dad goes, float away, you fairy! <laughs> 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 and it just seems like for three minutes, uh, he's trying to make Anthony and the Paglia and break. It works. And it works. It works. And he's that, just fucking laughing. Movie, yeah. That must have been the best take they had oh my God. of La Paglia not dying. And that's what they had to use. They should just put like the entire unedited yeah. footage of on YouTube. Because he's like legitimately like dying yeah, he's laughing. Like, You're giving him a complex. <laughs> it is like a 10 to 1 SNL sketch in the middle of a movie. <laughs> yeah, know? right. Like, <laughs> he starts going, he starts talking about the Pentaveret. Which ends up being a, a terrible Netflix show later, but th but that joke I, he ruined that joke. That joke was always the funniest thing to me in this movie when he just fires off the names. Yeah, the Queen, so the Vatican, the, the Gettys, the, Gettys, the, Gettys, the, the and Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders. Before he went tits up. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, just let that sit there as your own mythology that you invented. And then, oh, you're you gonna know. buy my chicken. <laughs> <laughs> just, the drive-by shooting of Colonel Sanders is just it's unbelievable. So I don't even know. How do they come up they with that? They also just do so many hat-on-a-hat things where you think it's like the end of the joke or the end of the scene, and then like Anthony LaPaglia making out with Brenda Fick. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we got to talk about William, because William, yeah. in the theater the first time I saw this and after, William and, boy, he, look at yeah. that head. It looks like Sputnik. <laughs> And oh, go cry yourself Pulling to sleep on your big pillow. Cr gargantuan cranium about <laughs> all the head jokes with William. <laughs> William, move your head, pants. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and poor William with his like little weird afro. And uh, I just that is my funny bone personified. It just fucking slays me on it's, his huge pillow. <laughs> It's like an orange on a toothpick. That is like the perfect four minute comedy scene. Yeah. It's so good. I do have one important question. Yeah. <clears throat> um, how old is William at, and how old is Charlie? This is this we got this coming up. Okay. There's just, there's right. a lot of undiscovered country okay. with the McKenzie family. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's do it now. Charlie's okay. probably like 31. And yeah. then they have a 14 year old boy. It's pretty weird. And yeah. the parents seem like Mistake they're in kid. their mid. 60s? Yeah. Father McKenzie is, he's definitely on in years. Sired. Yeah. Late in life, yeah. sired a child. 
And Brenda Fraker, in, in the movie, she's only in her, like, her mid to late 40s, but she's, like, costumed to look like she's 59. Yeah. yeah. So it's pretty weird. This is, I'm just going to read this <clears throat> without the accents. This is the actual dialogue at one point. This is just what it says on the script. Look at the size of that boy's heed. <laughs> Shh. I'm not kidding. It's like an orange on a toothpick. Shh. You're going to give the boy a complex. Well, that's a huge noggin. That's a virtual planetoid. Shh. Has its own weather system. <laughs> like, how do you, you even like putting that on a page and giving that to actors? I don't even know how it's you wonderful. would react. It's, it's just the fucking best. Can we we were trying to, to figure Myers. out though when we were talking about this. Mike Myers had, ha, it says he's descended from ancient Scottish an ancestry, but his family is from Liverpool. He seems like he hates Scotland. So does he like the Scots or hate the Scots? Well, he's no. done quite a lot of Scottish material, Fat and Shrek bastard. is yeah. Scottish. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. I mean, not, maybe not actually Scottish, but he... He was not born in Scotland, <laughs> Shrek. <laughs> well, he, I mean... <laughs> can we, should, can we get Edinburgh. Henry Lewis Gates in here? <laughs> the next... <laughs> Finding your roots with Shrek. <laughs> Well, the next scene I had where he has that quote about, I think most Scottish cuisine is based on a dare. Yeah. It's oh, yeah. the yeah, fucking it's perfect. It's so true. Like, who's like, what do you guys eat tonight? Oh, we're going to get some Scottish. Like, you would never, there's no Scottish category yeah. in Postmates. I do um, like a Scotch egg. Do you really? Yeah. Flirting at the butcher shop is my next scene, which also gets the Big Kahuna Burger Award for best use of food drink. And the Kid Cudi Pursuit of Happiness Award for Best Needle Drop because it plays the uh, the big audio dynamite yeah. song. Um, the the funny montage to me is Undefeated. Yeah. Where it's like Mike Myers, he's just going to help out behind meat. the counter. Yeah. He's got meat and he's just going to try to be funny with all of these cold cuts and meat that are on display and he fucking pulls it off. Yeah, some health code violations in the mix there, I think. I, I don't think it's... I was gonna have this in what's age the worst, but just generally like uh just poor butchery. Yeah, yeah. Mom, could you call the school nurse? <laughs> call the school nurse. Even on Nancy Travis's part, where they're like, I'd like a quarter inch thick sirloin. And she's like, ah like, she's just like slapping at the thing with a knife. This I mean, you have those three scenes basically in a row. This yeah. movie is like just on a killer pace, and you think it can't get any better, and then Phil Hartman shows up as John Johnson. <laughs> That's a, you can call him Vicky. That's a classic thing where it's just like, yeah, like, oh, that's really funny. Like, he's like, call me Vicky. And then the tour keeps going and he's talking about girls. And then <laughs> Phil Hartman tells the machine gun Kelly story. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> machine gun Kelly had what we call in the prison system a bitch. A bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I like when he gets mad. Myra starts talking and he like gives him like he this. He tries to be there. like, oh, yeah, I don't know really know what to do with Harriet. I think that's the funniest minute of the 90s for me. Yeah. Is Phil, Phil Hartman as the Alcatraz God. A Took guard. a makeshift knife Dude. or a shiv and cut out the bitch's <laughs> eyes. It makes me sad. I, I miss Phil Hartman. Yeah. I feel like there, there's he's one of the biggest what ifs like ever. Like 20 years we don't have of him doing stuff like this in movies. It's, it sucks. He's in my all-time funny pantheon. Yes. Yes. With Eddie and Will Ferrell. Oh, here we go. This is you sure you want to get no, all this I, I way right just now? Like, oh, yeah. How how long is the list? It, that might be the entire list. Eddie, Phil Hartman, and Will Ferrell. Just for people that could just make me laugh in any situation. If you gave them any kind of line of, line of dialogue, just how what they about can Clark hit. Oh, and Belu being Belushi. Shot by a shotgun. <laughs> no, Belushi would be the fourth one. Those four, right? Yeah. Just like they just make me laugh. And Phil Hartman, like. He's the fucking, like, who else could be that funny as the Alcatraz guard? Like, literally nobody in the planet. It's such he's an the best. incredible bit. Where he's yeah. just like, here's this story. This way to the cafeteria. <laughs> yeah, he's just so different from all those other guys, though, because all their comedy is about, like, them. And Phil Hartman is doing some character that is not, like, an outrageous Mike Myers character. Yeah. He's, like, stuffed shirt guy, I guess, is, like, the best way to describe. But that bit always works. It always worked on me. I, it's like, it's And so Farrell used to do this, like, Farrell basically does what Phil Hartman does where it's like it's he's being completely serious in the yeah. scene mm -hmm. right. and everybody else breaks. is dying they can't yeah. believe how funny this is yeah. but like even like when you watch Phil like Will Ferrell on like Eastbound like he's being completely serious <laughs> yeah. right and everybody yeah. else is like I can't believe Ashley Schaefer is a real thing <laughs> I also love the friendship with Meyer I had that on one stage the best Myers and LaPaglia like yeah. they really seem like they genuine do. friends and I like when they get Vicky and 
Vicky's like, all right, guys, follow me at the start that of the tour. That must have been the easiest like, paycheck the Anthony yeah. 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 ever the got. Pack is like, yeah. yeah, oh, man, we got Vicky. It's like, <laughs> <That's> how awesome. many <laughs> times have you guys been to Alcatraz? <laughs> I love that. Oh, man, we got Vicky. This is great. Yeah. It's, so it's like one in four chance. Yeah. Um, Alcatraz is amazing. That was another thing we loved about San Francisco, like going there and learning. I was like, oh, let's go to Alcatraz. We went like, I think, I think I personally went three times in the 90s, and I'm not even from San Francisco. You did a bit. What was it like there? It was much like The Rock. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So much fun. Uh, the Michael Richards cameo, the uh, where he's with the mechanic from Curb, the Amco guy yeah. mm -hmm. from season one. And he just is smoking and just crazy and then flips out. Does stop your job. Look at the insensitive man. That's what they're paying him for. Um, really good to see him. I like the all of the Ark and Lapaglia scenes where there's yeah. like some sort of star, I wish this was more like Starsky and Hutch is basically the premise. <laughs> the one later in the movie the when, later he, in the when movie he one. really tries to The guys upstairs are yeah. calling. Yeah. 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 That one is the best. That's the That funniest. whole bit is just great. It's so smart. Um, I like when he wins her back with the beat poem and I like when he finds out that she's the murderer. But really like the best scenes of this movie are in the first, I would yeah. say, hour. Yeah, I, I, kinda, I like I like this poem sucks. That one is really good when yeah. he wins her back. What do you got for most rewatchable? This is really tough. Oh, it's the, I don't. It's the first Mackenzie scene. It's the yeah. first Stewart scene. Agree completely. That's like that's like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. I I'm I'm gonna agree, but only because it's longer than the Hartman scene. Hartman okay. scene's like a minute and a half. The first Mackenzie scene. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I want to give a special shout out to just the very like twelve second scene where. Uh, Lapalia has like commandeered Charles Grodin's car and he's drumming on the dashboard and he's like, could you please stop that? And he's like, oh, is this bothering you? And he's like, no, it's one of my favorite things. It <laughs> <laughs> was like Charles Grodin yeah. in a nutshell. I There's also that. like when Stephen Wright is like, oh my God, I was dreaming. <laughs> <laughs> I was born eight and a half months premature. Is it Lapaglia or Lapalia? I think it's Lapalia. What is it, Chris? I have no idea. Yeah, I I always You're said Italian. I have never knew. I'm, he is Australian. I've so never. He he's Australian. He's yeah, not Italian. He Australian. We he's can't claim him. I think I, I no, assume his family is. He's the yeah, most Italian Italy. seeming guy on the planet. If yeah. you watch is, interviews with Australian. him, his like his, it's like accent. it's like the deep new like almost New York Italian with an Australian accent. It's really uh, uh, it's unsettling. I might be misremembering this, so don't quote me. But I feel like there was like a year there where people were thinking he might be the next De Niro. Is that possible? He was a pretty big deal for yeah. me. Yeah. Because he was a big stage actor too. And I, I think there I think there was some like buzz with him. And when he was in this movie, it was the first time he'd been in a comedy and it was pretty jarring to see him. He's in a stretch here. Yeah. Innocent Blood. Yeah. So I Married an Axe Murder. The Client. Really good in The Client. Yeah. And Empire Records, which I love. Oh, yeah. Um... And then he went on. He was on that show, Murder One, which was a really good Bochco show in the '90s. But then he it never really. What never was really his show that, that that hit in the 2000s? Without a trace. Yeah, without yeah. it, that was like eight years. Yeah. And then he, you know, I'm sure it. he did very well yes. on that show. What's age the best? Mentioned early '90s San Francisco. Mentioned early '90s coffee house culture. Chris, where do you stand on sensational '90s tabloid newspapers? Oh, I love them. The, between the Lyndon LaRouche newsletter and the, the yeah. yeah the news of the world or whatever it is yeah you think the internet killed those papers or do they still exist uh, I think that they're just on the internet now yeah okay and they also have like permeated everything sensitive beat poets I have funny actors playing multiple characters as long as the actor's funny I still enjoy same I like it yeah. you really have it's really a select group of people that can do it who's on the list Myers, Not many. Myers, Murphy, Peter Sellers. Jim Carrey could do it. Jim Carrey. Does Sandler ever do it? No, right? Mm. Sandler every could do it. I just don't think he would. Yeah, every yeah. once in a while. It's not, it's a short list. Shane Gillis? No. It's, <laughs> um, maybe. Could be in his future. Here's what was on the Scottish Wall of Fame, which is aged the best for me. Sir Harry Lauder. Sheena Easton, Alexander Graham Bell, Sean Connery, and Jackie Stewart. <laughs> That's a five photo. Sheena Easton is so good. Alexander Graham Bell. I didn't even know he was Scottish. I wonder what would all these perfect photos. What additions I would them. make since the early nineties? I don't know. Gosh, I don't know. You and McGregor. Yeah, for sure. Good one. Who else is from Scotland? Who's from Scotland, Craig? 
Uh, groundskeeper Willie from The Simpsons. Chris, have you been to Scotland? No. How come? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? I just never got over there. I did Ireland. I did How England. far is it away from England? <clears throat> no, it's it's just right up there. So it's up in the north. Be some reason you want to go. I, it's not. I've been like, to England like thirty <laughs> times. <laughs> never like wonder what Scotland's like. I would love to go to Scotland. Okay. I've been to Edinburgh. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's incredible. Heard it's really nice. Yeah. Nice big awesome buildings. Uh, there were some buildings. Some certainly. beer. Yeah. We could do the retrain spotting in <laughs> Glasgow or Edinburgh if you wanted to. You know, I've never really liked Scotland, but I have no reason. You've never been. Never been and never wanted to go and don't really <laughs> like it. I wonder if Myers, like Jedi mind tricked me into not liking Scottish people. It's pretty fun. They're pretty cool. I, I had a great time. Good when I was puddings there. for them. The, I, the, the, one thing, the one thing that really destroyed me when I was there was, you know, I stayed in like a beautiful home in Edinburgh and they served a full English breakfast every, every day. day. A Scottish yeah. breakfast yeah. every day. You have to walk like 32,000 steps yes. to work that off. And it, it messed me up yeah. pretty bad. More what's aged the best. Cubby Webby Womb Room Tea. <laughs> That aged the best? I just thought that was funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> the Queen Elizabeth dartboard in the bathroom, yeah, which yeah. you see for a, a split bit. second, is so yeah. funny. Great. Yeah. Just like little stuff like that really <laughs> works. When, uh, no, that was in Ireland. Never mind. I was going to make a, I was going to just tell a story that there was when Queen Elizabeth died. There was like a video of like soccer fans at a stadium chanting <laughs> Lizzie's in a box. <laughs> So, <laughs> <The Irish. laughs> but it's not, you know, I put this in just for Chris for what stage the best drunk beer di- drinking dads on 70s recliners, yeah, singing with bottles rollers. right next to them, <laughs> <laughs> just, just for Chris. Uh, the movie credits in the beginning, I think. With the Boo Radleys and the giant cappuccino cup. Has aged the best from like a, oh, this was fun in the 90s yeah, it's when like everybody fun... tried to copy Goodfellas yeah, for like yeah. five years. And so it I was, that it's, era. it's probably like a, it's probably the great shot Gordo of the movie. I don't know yeah. if you, you the would. Cappuccino. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I'm smitten. I'm in deep smit. You, Solid. You know I like what? when people twist words like that. I, I know that these, that this has probably fallen out of larger fashion, but neurotic guys in the 90s navigating the world of relationships it was pretty yeah. good movie Big fodder. Big Woody Allen mm-hmm. hangover from But that, like very Campbell much. Scott, Ethan yeah. Hawke, this, you know, it's mm-hmm. like guys Billy who are Crystal. just like, oh, I just, I can't get relationships right. And yeah. It's like, eh. Average looking guys who can attract the hottest women in the world who are like, I don't know about this. Yeah. Should I commit? Right. <laughs> like, right. Dude, Nancy Travis is right there. <laughs> <laughs> the double date where they're fighting over the check, I like, negatory, no, negative. It, and they're just, nobody's grabbing it, and then she just takes it. I like when the dad says, the second time they go to the McKenzie's, and he's like, show the picture of Charlie when he shit his pants <laughs> at Niagara Falls. <laughs> <laughs> just kind of stuck it in there. Then it is a, Charlie, we're in there, let a match. When he's just basically yeah. trying Light to make it seem like Charlie's taking a shit. <laughs> Could you say the birth of Dr. Evil is in this movie? Evil. Evil. So evil. Evil the fruits think, of the devil. I think he's whatever. He's probably playing around with it, right? Yeah, he's Definitely. playing yeah. around with it. Definitely. The back scratching maps I really liked as a witch is the best. Yeah, it's like Golden Great Bridge. Go to Oakland. Yeah. San Andreas Fault. They had really good chemistry. I thought the two of them. I like when people leave a trail of dead husbands across the country. Yeah. So Black Widow with Teresa Russell and Deborah Winger, mm. which is a really solid movie that somebody should remake into a scripted series. But I like when somebody's got a past and then you can look it up and it's like, wait, she lived in Miami. That's where that guy died. That's where Wayne, and then he was married and the wife disappeared. Yeah. Always good. Thumbs up. I just think it's funny to imagine like her being like, if she was a killer, just being like so honest about everywhere she's been yeah, yeah, and yeah. Every, every person she's right. been. Yeah, all the artifacts from her previous yeah. marriages. Yeah. Yeah, I had Harriet's apartment just because it was cool. Yeah. Good set. Chachki filled 90s apartments. Yeah. The one thing that's missing is an oversized map of <laughs> Atlantic <laughs> City. <laughs> oh, you got one. <laughs> the uh, supporting cast, we mentioned a lot of these people, but just Anthony LaPaglia, LaPaglia, Amanda Plummer, Michael Richards, Brenda Fricker, Charles Grodin, Phil Hartman, Debbie Mazar, Stephen Wright, Alan Arkin, and then Sheila Kelly's in the pictures from I thought singles. that was so funny. Yeah. That doesn't talk. They must have cut her out. Yeah. This is the is this the most overqualified cast in movie history? It's mo- definitely it's a lot of probably like do you want to come do a day yeah. maybe a day yeah and with and Mike Myers yeah. Um, for Sheila Kelly, it's like can you pose for a 
picture with a cat. <laughs> so I can make fun of you <laughs> during my beat poem. So apparently, um, <clears throat> Nancy Travis cut her finger in real life during the butcher scene. Mm-hmm. And there's a couple shots where you can just see her with like a giant bandaid on her mm. finger because she was laughing at Mike Myers and accidentally chopped her finger off and they had to reattach it. <laughs> um, the Alamo Draft House was showing anniversary showings and they lifted their no talking role and allowed people to shout quotes at the screen. Wow. High praise. And then the last thing I had was the, uh, the, the, the Pallia with the Serpico detective and the Alan Arkin where he's like, I thought I was going to be Serpico instead I'm fish from Barney Miller. Yeah. It's aged the best and the worst. I got that joke. No way. Craig got it, <laughs> but, uh, I'm sure he could, I love the back the and forth. Was. What, uh, what other words age the best? Uh, no, I, 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 I just really thought like nineties guy trying to sort out like long-term relationships was yeah. like, this is, this is actually a pretty big sweet spot for me. I mean, Mike Myers in, in general, like Mike yeah, Myers, early nineties, yeah, Mike Myers. just like, how, how, cause, cause now we know we're never getting it back. Right. So we got to cherish this, this sh- very short list of movies he made in the nineties. Well, I like this movie so much that. I created a new category for us that oh we won't use every week, but it, I think we're going to get some use out of it. I'm pretty excited about it. It's the Elizabeth Shue as an Oxford Electrochemist Award <laughs> for most improbable casting of a hot actress. And it goes to Nancy Travis, uh. who plays a hot butcher. <laughs> How many hot butchers have you seen in, in your day? It's honestly, not a single one. Going down to the butcher. She's fucking smoking. <laughs> How does it relate to all the other cities that she like? Was she a butcher in every town? Because you really have to learn butcher. the art I don't of butchering. Think, I don't know how she winds up with the job at World of Meats or Meats of the World. Meats of the World. But it doesn't look like she's been like on a trail of like opening and closing butcher shops across the country. So this is just something she's taken up now that she's moved back. Or to maybe San she's like gotten a job. She's a there. fledgling butcher. Yeah. But you have to learn how to do that. She's you would overwhelmed think. by her customer base. That's true. She doesn't seem to have very good knife skills. How would you do in a butcher shop? Uh, front of house, like yeah. fine. But yeah. any, any kind of like, I have to get the ribs off, like not not okay. well. You? You ever worked in a butcher shop? I'd be terrible. You really have to pay attention and it's it'd be just careful the whole time. I would chop you, my hand you'd off. You'd lose a manacle? Yeah, yeah, I'd be like, wait, what? The, what's the Red Sox score? Ah! <laughs> Um, I do think, though, that a sneaky Dion Waiters candidate is the guy who's like, I'm next. I'm next. <laughs> <laughs> do you agree that that category should be named after Elizabeth Shue and the Saint? Yeah. <laughs> as an electrochemist working in Oxford? Or would you have gone with Nicole Kidman in that movie when she's like a... Neurologist in mm-hmm. Days of Thunder? I, ha- I have a really great candidate. Hold on one second. I'm going to tell you. I used to have a whole list of these people. I think I did it in a mailbag like 20 years ago. By far my favorite example of this is Denise Richards in <laughs> The World <laughs> is Not Enough. A one. She plays Dr. Christmas Jones, an American nuclear physicist. That's right. That might be that better than best. Elizabeth Shue. Denise, so the Denise read, what was her job again? She was a nuclear physicist. Her name is Dr. Christmas Jones. There was like a- The Denise Rich, we had Richards like a, as Dr. Christmas Jones award. That's really good. We had a 15 year run there of like extremely hot women who would put on glasses for one scene. Yeah. And be like, yeah. I think there's an <clears throat> alien here. Yeah. She's all that effect. Yeah. yeah. There was somebody who was doing nuclear fusion in one of those movies too. I want to say it was Nicole Kidman. I think she double dipped. Well, she was in the Peacemaker. She's like I a think she was in the nuclear fusion yeah. in the yeah. Peacemaker. Yeah. That sounds right. There's nothing funnier when it's like, here's the whoever, and it's just like six foot tall, yeah. and most it's, gorgeous it can go person both ways. Possible. There's right. been some really funny Keanu Reeves jobs. Yeah, it's true. Where it's like, come on. <laughs> yeah, but it, but it, it 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 was getting to the point where it was like, you know, the new leader of the United Nations is Shannon Tweed. You know, like it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 it, we, they were pushing the envelope in the late '90s. The Den of Thieves Benny Hahn Award scene stealing location. The hotel's pretty cool. Yeah. At the end. Yeah. 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 And I like the uh the the poetry place. Great Jack Order Award was the opening credits. What's the Butch's girlfriend weak link of the film for you? For me, it's the last yeah. like 15 minutes. It's just like I know he's gonna not get killed and let's just get to the end. Yes. And also I think that the comedy after Groden and Stephen Ray is a lot of like, oh my balls. Like Yeah, it is really slapsticky when he's yeah. being chased on the roof. That's yeah. funny. Yeah. And like the axe between his fingers and everything. It's just very different tone from the rest yeah. of the movie. 
What's age the worst? The Pentaveret, just because it led to yeah. where we were. I had Na- that too. Sad. 90s green screen? Mm-hmm. What else do you have? Um, I I mean, the, the birth of Mike Myers as a diva, you know? Like, that. Yeah. it's kind of fucked up a lot of opportunity. Um, I think comedy. I This weekend is one of the best movie comedy weekends of all time. It's the same weekend as Robin Hood Men in Tights. It was, also, oh. it was my birthday weekend. I was turned 11 on this weekend. <laughs> oh, wow. And uh, weekend I saw both of these movies over this weekend. And uh, Did you go with a I was lot like, of, is this really happening? Did you go like, with a lot of homies? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. I went with friends. But I was like, I got introduced to Dave Chappelle this weekend from Robin Hood wow. and Tights. You know, that, that was my first Mel Brooks movie in the theater. And, and Mike Myers, who I was just discovering from SNL and Wayne's World. And I was like, oh, my God. So very similar. I wasn't on a date. Did uh, you uh, write a birthday poem that year? Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm going to perform it right now. <laughs> More would say the worst. Hello, oh, yeah. <laughs> just the just the, so hacky. The the guy with the bits at the coffee shop, you know. I also had uh the the hygiene for the opening scene coffee mug, where they basically oh I had that in the Nipix. dishwasher. Yeah, they yeah. dip it. They wash it for like one second in dirty it's water. Disgusting. Wipe it down with a dirty rag. Yeah, and then hand it back. To yeah. you. So glad you brought that yeah. up. I had that later, but it's disgusting because I watched it and I'm like. Wait a second. Was that the same cup that they pulled off a table and I rewound it? And yeah, they washed that thing for one second. Got to tell you guys, when I worked in catering, uh, I worked as a dishwasher and uh, pretty accurate. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> yeah. As somebody with an extensive restaurant background, I'm going to also say accurate. Yeah. I was just surprised they led the movie with it. What's age the worst? There's only really one truly funny grandfather or uh, father scene with... Uh, with, the, with uh, Charlie's dad. And I, I I just feel like... You wanted more. They were just sitting on plutonium, basically. I mean, we get like three or four scenes with him. Yeah, we but do nothing get, that comes... We have a even, piper down! Nothing yeah. that comes... <laughs> <laughs> if you want my body. <laughs> it's all solid, but nothing that compares to the first four yeah. minutes. He's just funny feel, in every scene he's in, but he doesn't get a lot of time after that first So this leads scene. to my next... Which is, like, could he have played darts in the, in the bar or something? Yeah. Like, oh. Rather than the Pentaveret, why didn't we just get the Stuart McKenzie I know. TV show? That yeah. would have been great. I, I do He's think that the what's, what's age the worst is the, the split screen technology. Oh, yeah. No yeah, question. Because you can, you can see everybody who's in the scene with Stuart is basically holding on for dear life not to crack up. Yeah. And then Mike Myers is just staring at a dot on a wall somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. The, some of the pop cultural references. Did you know who Huggy Bear was, Craig? No. Yeah. <laughs> You've not seen Starsky and Hutch? No. The soundtrack's okay. Oh, this is a shock. I thought you were going to flip out about the soundtrack because this is so very too. Simmons core playlists. So you're not wrong, but it's like, th- I, I just feel like this was such an awesome time for music that they really could have landed the plane with one of the great soundtracks. It's okay. like they put There She Goes on it twice. Four the times. Wets. But, right, but, but two song, different bands. But the song plays four times in the movie. Toad the Wet Sprocket, Soul Asylum, The Break, which is actually, I like that song. I think that Toad song, didn't it blow up off of the So I, I Married yeah, an Axe yeah. Murderer soundtrack? Big Audio Dynamite, that's, that one's been Rush on a couple yeah, movies. It was though. a remix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, f- I feel like that's a pretty familiar well, that one. That song came out like 1990, right? That's the, not a new song. The old Ned's Atomic Dustbin, redoing the Saturday Night. And then the big one that really feels the most 1993 to me was Spin Doctor, Two Princes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, the Spin Doctors, I can't explain it, what happened. They were gigantic for f- four weeks, oh, four it was months. longer than that. It was like a... Whatever. Was massive on MTV. Better part of Pocket a year. Full of Kryptonite, I had that album. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was probably four months. So they but had two songs that were huge they had two songs. songs. They had a video. They had kind of a weird guy who did like kind of the weird kind there of was dance. Like, but they were thing. like the rock version of the jam band. Like with them, is them and Blues Traveler kind of popularized. Like, but everyone flipped on them at the exact same time. It is. It sucks when that happens, man. It that was actually brutal. like it's like when you're like, when you're just like every single person in the world is like I'm good. They, Those they guys were fucking lines. suck. In what Those movie guys were they were like riding a high? Weren't they like a very obvious punchline in a movie in a couple of years later? Wasn't it like the fucking spin doctors? It, it, oh, yeah. I'm telling you, it flipped, it, was. it flipped 
instantaneously. It happened with Hootie and the Blowfish too, but they were more because that album was so huge. Everybody yeah. was kind of going, it got too big. wait a second, what happened? Yeah, how is this bigger than the Eagles? Yeah. Spin Doctors, people are like, yeah, won't you? <laughs> dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and then one day we all looked at each other and we were like, "This, they suck. Get them out of here. And that was it. Seemed like an overreaction. It's perfectly fine pop rock songs. I think they have a couple good songs. Yeah. There you yeah. go. Get the Doctor revival going. I think maybe they'll come back. My last What's Age the Worst is I just can't see Amanda Plummer as a crazy person in a movie without thinking that she's going to go, no, I'm an execute every fucking one of the fucking one of you! I just, when she starts yelling at the end, I'm just in the coffee shop I with like her that little Rob. sneak preview of, of Pulp. Pulp. Whenever. Coming, when, when is that coming? Well, next year's know. 30. When Pulp comes, that's when you'll know we're all out of here. <laughs> That'll be it. <laughs> That's how we that we'll will know. God it's like, oh my God, they did the Pulp Fiction pie. Yeah. You mean out of here, you Start mean like, packing. like depart this mortal coil? Like yeah, this, we're, just, we're all going to die? We're going to move to Scotland together. <laughs> That's right. The three of us. <laughs> and Craig. We're bringing Craig. That's great. That sounds nice. Um, what was so Amanda Plummer, really quickly. She's Christopher Plummer's daughter. Yeah. She's, she starts her career. She can't stand her. She's kind of normal in movies. She's in World According to Garp. She freaks me out. Right? She played Ellen James in World According to yeah, Garp. Yeah, she's, she's, she's never played a normal character at any point in her life. But she's only psychos after this movie. Yeah. Right? She's like in Needful Things. She's in Pulp. She's only like You just like see shrieking. her like, oh, she's the bad guy. It's yeah. like she's like the, the one-armed guy in The Fugitive. We're yeah. like, oh, that guy. Mm -hmm. Don't trust that guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she... I don't think she could do anything other than play crazy. I think she's, I've always thought she was too over the top. I kind of liked her in Pulp Fiction. She's fantastic in Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Honey Bunny? Honey yeah. Bunny. I don't know if you guys have seen that movie. Um, I'm going to get around to it I soon. can't imagine any other actress in the universe as Honey Bunny. That's how good she is in Pulp Emma Fiction. Emma Stone? No. <laughs> no. No. You have to be legit crazy. <laughs> if you saw Emma Stone sitting in a diner with, like, you would just be like, oh, wow. Emma Stone with, like, crit. I feel like Emma Stone could do crazy. I agree, but there's something feral about Amanda Plummer, where it's like, did she just come in off the street? You know, like it's a she's, great point. Yeah, Pharaoh maybe like a, you could maybe get away with like uh I was gonna say Julia Fox, but Julia Fox. Yeah. That's not what I think of when I think of Julia Fox, not <laughs> Farrell. Let me tell you. I don't know about that one, Chris. Uh all right, Jesus Christ. How, Christ. how dare you God bring up damn it, bad Chris, idea in a brainstorm, I guess. Well, you know what Sean's feelings about Julia Jesus Fox. Christ, the queen of Long Island. Come on. Sean went to her book signing. <laughs> Julia, can you sign this to Sean? Yeah. I love the big picture. Yeah. Thanks, Julia. Just be like, you're my hall pass. <laughs> I don't know. It was actually like a six month window with Julia Fox, and then and things went way like, crazy, yeah. but that's six months. Man, we really had something. You guys had Aaron Rodgers, it lined up, right. Julia Fox, and like the spin doctors. Yeah. God, it was all coming all together for the Long Islanders. Ron Burgundy flew to where best. Cohen is suspended. <laughs> I know. Ron Burgundy flew to where best time for a pee break. Probably like right around when they get engaged to the wedding, and mm -hmm. you just the, the actual wedding. You can jump yeah. into the bathroom. Was there a better title for this movie? I have a note about this, which is that it should be so comma. I married an axe murderer. Dot dot dot. That should How be the name How do you feel about the, the spelling of axe? Uh, well. It's are not you an AX guy or are you an AXE guy? I believe I believe AX is how style at the ringer. We need to confirm that with Craig I think Gaines. it's AX though. Oh, I think it should be AXE though. Because? Because that's how it's spelled. How is it? When is it? It's spelled AX ever? I think so. I think uh, Chicago style is uh, AX. I've never been. So what would you, would you go with a better title or no? I don't understand the, the, the punctual, like any of the punctual. It's just, so I married an AX murderer. Is that a sentence? Is it like, I don't so like, what? It's I don't like the like, title. It's like, I think it has like a little bit of a, the one about like, right, Boston. but where's the ellipsis? I know. I'm just saying, I think it was in this, in the manner of the day of like trying to like make a funny sentence out. Like when Harry met Sally, I guess that's a little bit easier to understand. What it, would your it, alt be? You're right that it, is clearly, your alt it is clearly inspired by when Harry met Sally. Uh, Would you rather call it pissing into the bitch's ocular cavities? <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> so I pissed into the bitch's ocular cavities. That would be an incredible prequel about Vicky. <laughs> I yeah. do really want to have like the Machine Gun Kelly in, in, in Alcatraz movie. <laughs> Should they have done it as a flashback yeah. in the movie? Yeah. I had that in unanswerable questions. Do you think that story is true? Or was that Myers just coming up with it? No. Who We've knows? We've got Machine Gun in. Come on in, Machine Gun. <laughs> Come here, he is. Um, 
I don't think it's the right title. What do you think it should be? Harriet, Sweet Harriet? No. Who would see that movie? If I was like, hey, Bill, you want to go see Harriet, Sweet Harriet with me this weekend? There is a great slasher called Alice, Sweet Alice. My Killer Wife? Something like that. My Wife's Murderer? Just to be shorter. It's probably... My Axe Murdering Wife? I don't know. I don't know. This one is memorable for some reason. It's always irked me the way that it's styled. But Maybe it's memorable. it's memorable because the styling of it is so bad. Yeah. Best quote, basically anything Stuart McKenzie says. Mm-hmm. Um, What's your absolute favorite? <sighs> Float away, you fairy. <laughs> um, well, you know what's a funny quote? It was like, I know... When they, she's like, what do you like about a woman? And he says, I know everyone says sense of humor, but I'd really have to go with breast size. <laughs> That's a good line. Um, now, for Mackenzie, I don't know. He'll be crying himself to sleep tonight on his huge pillow. <laughs> his huge pillow. <laughs> That's probably the best one. That Incredible. just kills the pagley. He's, yeah. he's like done after that. He's rolled over. Chris, you have a hottest take? I do. Uh... I actually just kind of sneaky think that um, Harriet and Charlie don't have any chemistry because all of the scenes which they're getting along are montages. Mm -hmm. So we don't really get a chance to see like why she would like him Mm -hmm. other than like, I guess she thinks he's funny. But yeah, they have flirt energy, but not like, what would they talk about at dinner? On yeah, a Thursday like I'm night like, energy? and and this gets into much larger unanswerable questions and picking nits about Charlie. But for me, I think that my hottest take is like, that was a charity case by Harriet in, in almost any other, like, scenario. My hottest take is related to that, which is that Charlie is one of the 10 worst movie characters in the history <laughs> of <film. laughs> I, We know nothing about this guy other than he has Scottish parents and he's yeah. a beat poet. Does he have a job? That's exactly, Does he have I a I had that later. Yeah, I have that. So, on the, on the, this movie's on Max, and in the description it says, a bookstore owner falls in love with dot, dot, dot. Un- that's it's like, bookstore owner? They never mentioned... Unless the implication is that that coffee shop is Charlie's, and that and there is a bookstore there. There's no indication of that. Yeah. He's None. like, I'm going up tonight. Yeah. So, he's unemployed, he's a beat poet, and his family's insane. And, so, and that's and the he has fear thing. of commitment... Well, he clearly has time all day to just drive around, just hop, drive, drive around, around and, and hop behind the counter like, at the yeah. butcher. Sylvester the cat oh, shit. Was yeah. stopping by the newspaper to drop off this ad for my parents' 30th <laughs> anniversary. Like, what is this guy doing with his life? <laughs> <laughs> so, Get a job, Charlie. It's funny because my hottest take is related to your hottest takes. Nancy Travis, worst taste in men of any actress in the right. last 35 years. Wow. This is great. Garcia and Internal Affairs. <laughs> Incredible. Fucking domestic violence asshole. <laughs> Great Charlie poem. the Broke Poet. Yep. Jeff from The Vanishing, who's <laughs> yeah. going away on the yeah. weekends. Yeah. Fucking search for his dead girlfriend. Becker and Tim Allen. It's a fucking murderer as well. So we have to I don't do know who's Internal the worst Affairs out of those five. To, to, con- to complete the Nancy Travis trilogy. She all, it's all, there's also Michael J. It's Fox a, and Greed. That's the other one. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah. What is it about her that's like, let's put her with a fucking loser or an asshole? I don't know. She seems like a lovely person. <laughs> yeah. She's that very specific kind of beautiful that seems very normal. Doesn't seem unattainable. I loved her. She's great. She was like one of my absolute early 90s all-time favorites. She, I think she hangs well with Myers um, in a weird movie where Myers is like, I'm doing bits here, everybody, in this normal yeah. world. I'm doing bits the whole I time. I think she keeps up and sells it great. She still looks great. Yeah. She's on, what is she on now? She's on she's that on Tim Allen show, show right? now? Yeah, I don't know what show she's on now. Yeah, she's on, yeah. Um, Last Man Standing, I think that's yeah. it. Last Man Standing, okay. Just unbelievable career. Little Nolan Ryan-ish. Yeah. Still, still going. throwing yeah. through high 90s. A no-hitter is still, still just right around the corner. But yeah, I don't know why they didn't just put her in a normal movie. Um, she was around for a... Oh, and she was also... She was the lady from uh, Three Men and a Baby, but I don't know which one was the dad. But it was Steve Gutenberg, Selleck, or Danson. If it was Gutenberg, add him to the list. Damn, Destiny turns on the radio. Forgot about this one. Casting oh, yeah. What Ifs... A lot of people attached to this. There was some Chevy Chase thing. We know for sure that the studio wanted Gary Shandling and then they backed out and there was a big dispute about that. Gary Shandling in this movie, 
I think it would have been a lot more neurotic. Yeah. It, yeah. The the fear of commitment I'm not against leading it. man post Woody Allen leading man is definitely a Gary Shanley. I'm not archetype. against Gary Shanley. Probably would have been better with Chevy though. This it, feels like a Chevy movie. Yeah. Yeah. Woody Allen was allegedly on board for three weeks and then wanted a lot a lot of money. That's he's way too old and I don't know how that would have worked. Yeah. I 90% believe this, but Sharon Stone was supposed to play Harriet and she wanted to play Harriet and Rose and have them be kind of an interesting flex. I love that idea. Yeah. I love that idea. And they said no. And then she said, fuck off. Not a bad idea. The I don't want to dump my girl si Nancy Travis. But, but the crazy twin sister as played by Sharon Stone. That's a It's a different movie, but it's a cool movie. That's yeah, pretty good. Can you imagine Tommy Schlamy with like two stars who are both playing multiple roles? Like also yeah. Mike Myers and Sharon Stone on the same set is chaos. Yeah, that's a good point. Myers wanted Aykroyd to play his buddy because he idolized Aykroyd and uh Aykroyd was making cone heads at the time. Mm. Double bomb. I'll John I'll Candy. Coneheads, I'm sorry. I will. John Candy was the first choice to be the police captain boss, but couldn't do it. And then Gary Busey was supposed to be Vicky. <laughs> <laughs> but did rookie of the year instead and dropped out oh incredible oh performance and then we end the up year. with phil hartman and then uh i guess this is true S sean connery was supposed to play Stuart mckenzie no that that was in the this is half-assed and then they tried to get michael kane as well and then he decided to do it himself i don't know who knows i'm thankful it worked out the way that it did Sean Connery as Stuart McKenzie is fucking weird. Thank God that didn't happen. Can you imagine if Sean Connery was just in this movie for three scenes and it made like no money? <laughs> it was just like one of them. Like, the like, look at that kid's Sean head. Connery it's like Sputnik. Movies. People would be, it <laughs> yeah. was a pretty hot Sean Connery sure. stretch too. Ruffle Hannah Rubinick Partridge overacting word. Amanda Plummer. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was actually going to go for Myers here. Oh. Just for like, hello. 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 Maybe yeah, Hello is actually funny. Should we bring it in? Should we make it a part of the show? <laughs> Chris, just start doing it. <laughs> the Hello uh, Award. Just start do, doing it on the watch. Do it with Andy, but don't like tell Andy him. Like Andy makes a pun, and do I'm like, Hello! Watch. Yeah, do it on Monday's watch and see, and see if he's okay. like, Chris, what the fuck is going on? Why are you doing this? Do it like a hundred times. Andy has a little bit of Hello to him. A little bit. Yeah. He does, yeah. A little bit of riffage. Yeah. I'm in my own movie. Heifetz has it. Yes, I can see Heifetz yeah, doing that fantasy yeah, yeah. football podcast. Maybe it's time to introduce Hello bit. to Heifetz. Yeah, yeah he'll yeah. beat a bit into the ground. Are you going that? No. A lot Don't of people catching Don't strays on this yeah, pod. <laughs> no, Austin Gale's a big winner. Love, yeah, he's the beat poet of the ringer. <laughs> love that. <laughs> D-V-O-A! <laughs> You called out the blitz. <laughs> Give me a kiss. <laughs> oh my God. Best that guy award. Some incredible nominees here, including the Amco mechanic from Curb mm -hmm. or Borat's prostitute <laughs> date. Who was my winner? Lunell. She plays the cop. Yeah. 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 She's in Star I, I couldn't born remember too. where I saw her for a while. And then I'm like, and then I, I clicked. Yeah. She has a bunch of those over the years. She was like the woman at the the checkout register at the beginning of A Star Is Born too. Yeah. I think Sheila Kelly works as well. Mm. Yeah. That's a good one. Dion Waiters Award. This is uh, one of the hardest Dion Waiters no, ever had. No, it's not. It's Hart it's Hartman, but it's an incredible. I, I, I do think Richards is like Richards on the podium. Is, Richards like can't believe he didn't win it. Grodin's in here. Who else would you have? I mean, Debbie Mazar is perfect in her one <laughs> little scene. Like electrocuted. Being electrocuted. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I like that a lot. It's got to be Hartman, though. No Stephen Wright. He's, he's a nominee. Some great Dion I've never candidates. done it at night. <laughs> Recasting couch. I don't know. I mean, you want to you get Amanda Plummer out of that? Yeah, you want to get Olivia Dabo in for Amanda Plummer or something? Oh, like so a... Someone a little less obvious. Yeah. Some, yeah, I do oh. think that it would be a good, it would be better to have a head fake. Yep. Debbie Mazar who... would be a good rose, honestly. Hmm. Yeah, I love Debbie Mazar. So it has to be somebody around Nancy Travis's age. Mm -hmm. Either a little lower or a little higher. But it can't be somebody too famous. Nancy Travis is 62. What if it was Glenn Close? Too old. <laughs> How about our girl Sandy Bullock? 
She wasn't famous enough yet. Very non-threatening. Yeah. Yeah. That would be pretty cool. Is Sandra Bullock 62? If that's true, that's mind-blowing. How is she 62? What do you mean? I'm just saying, like, is she around Nancy Travis's age? Yeah, 59. 59. She is the Nolan Ryan. That, that's remarkable. Yeah. You see her in The Lost City? She's 59? Yeah. My word. She's just a delight. Another one I loved. <laughs> She's Love still potion around. number nine. Just loved her. Uh, While you were sleeping. <laughs> half past internet research. Myers had to put three to four hours of prosthetic makeup on to play Stuart. It's so funny because all he really needs is the glasses. The glasses is what makes it. Yeah. There's some screenwriting stuff where um, obviously Myers rewrote that script and put in 90% of the bits because they're all like screaming Mike Myers, but the Writers Guild gave the screenwriting credit to the guy who originally wrote the script and Myers was pissed about it. The, um, the restaurant, the Fog City Diner, where they eat, that's gone. The butcher shop they used for Meats of the World was actually Prudente Meats on Grant Avenue. Still exists. Do you go to like an independent butcher for your meats? My wife does the uh, the farmer's market one. Okay. Which is really good. Mm -hmm. You're a big McCall's guy? I slaughter all my own hogs. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> the hotel is the Dunsmuir House in East Oakland. And then the cafe is Cafe Rhodes. Um, it's in the bar Vesuvio which is at the corner of Columbus Avenue and Jack Kerouac Alley. Still exists, apparently. Hmm. Nancy Travis married the producer after filming this movie. That fucking lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> um, great job by Robert Freed. Yeah. P produces the movie didn't, he didn't seems make also money, like but he... He's a pretty he, cool guy. I mean, like, he just... It, all his quotes and, like, the So I Married an Axe Murderer 20 Years Later kind of pieces are yeah. really delightful. The soccer game that they watched... Um, Scotland won, won nothing, and it took place in Denver, Colorado on May 17th, 1992 at Mile High Stadium, Chris. Yeah, I don't think the, the I don't know USMNT if, Who was on the pitch for us? Do you remember? I, I, I can't imagine, but that was a pretty decent run for Scotland yeah. in 92. They were in the Euros true? and stuff. Yeah. Interesting. They were, they were a solid team. That's got to be early Tony Miola days, right? Sure. And then an eyewitness said that Myers doing the woman poem took like 14 hours shoot to shoot because he kept flubbing the takes. And she said, I hear it in my sleep sometimes. That's Woman. Woman. Ah, hold on. I got to do that again. Apex Mountain. Mike Myers, no. I'm going to say yes for Nancy Travis with this and the vanishing at the same time. I, I felt like, she, I thought her career was going to keep going up. She went into TV instead. I feel like she probably did pretty well on Becker. Oh, yeah. Like 20 million people were watching Becker every week. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> Did you watch one minute of Becker? No, never. Do you know what the plot Becker of Becker was? Becker was a newspaper editor? I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. He was a hat maker. I love Ted Danson, but I was like, therapist. we had such a good therapist? with Sam Malone, I'm out. Dr. John Becker is easily oh, he's annoyed. a doctor. Yeah. By noisy neighbors, a ridiculous comment, a flickering streetlight. He's a talented and dedicated doctor and goes the extra mile for those in need, but he doesn't waste a chance to give anyone a piece of his mind. What oh, is he's a cantankerous doctor. Dr. Becker. Oh, yeah. I'm just looking at the... Uh, Shawnee Smith, yeah, from the Saw films. It went from 98 to 2004. Yeah, yeah. Shawnee Smith. My, mo my wife's mom came over like a week and a half ago because mm -hmm. we were gone for a while, and she came over with uh, her dog to hang out with our dogs for a few hours. And I was like, do you want me to put something on TV for you? And... She said, no. And I was like, no, I'll put something on. And you're like, you're going to be here for like two hours because she was waiting for somebody. She's like, can you put on the Golden Girls? <laughs> so I'm like, I can absolutely do that. She's 83. <laughs> um, so found Go Golden on Girls Hulu, yeah. on Hulu. I'm like, what season? Like one of the earlier seasons? She's like, yeah. So we put in the first episode of season two. Blanche was pregnant. What? Blanche Wait. got pregnant. Rue McClanahan's character. The character is pregnant? The character was pregnant. And that was, and I put that on and I left. And I don't know what happened to Blanche. <laughs> but There's it made me think no like no way she was actually it was pregnant. first episode well, of season two. that's one of the two. things about the Golden Girls. First of all, I like the Golden Girls. It's me actually too. really funny. But it's I a think really that funny yeah. show. Dorothy I was and Blanche are on the younger side of retirement. What, like 59? What I are we no, talking about? I don't know. I, I had no idea that Blanche was pregnant. I don't know if that's... But that Blanche was apparently like the harlot of the group. She was. So it's like, was oh man, Blanche yeah. is doing it again. <laughs> getting around, yeah. 
<laughs> still Getty was not getting the it show in. was yeah. like <laughs> yeah but I, I I'm not kidding when I say I never had seen a single minute of it before and I was just kind of like you never seen going? the show you've before? never never oh. what the fuck out of here you I'm never watched the Golden Girls never that's a not rare once. blind spot for you because I feel like you're really up on all that show was a huge show and it was good I know I just Craig you ever see the Golden Girls no that's funny you should do like a 400 episode Golden Girls rewatch <laughs> <laughs> with Carrie's mom. <laughs> Were you into Maud? Like, do you have any B. Arthur stock? Didn't watch Maud. Wow. Wow. No. This is a big blind spot for yeah. you. Yeah. My biggest B. Arthur, you know, connection is Jeff Ross saying, I wouldn't fuck with B. Arthur's dick at the <laughs> roast, which is, that's how I always think of B. Arthur Very now. Funny the joke. funniest roast joke of all time. Um, Apex Mountain for Scottish people? I was going to say Scotland. Uh, it's a it's an incredible run here. We go 1991 Teenage Fan Club releases Bandwagon-esque. Yep. Yeah. We got Scotland making the Euros for the first time in 92. Axe Murderer, Braveheart in 95, and Train Spotting in 96. What a run. Incredible. The 90s belong to Scotland. And, incredible. And, and somehow we skipped going, you and me. <laughs> we mentioned... Out. I truly think that the early 90s, right around now, is pre-Silicon pre Valley... San Francisco, Apex Mountain. This was like the best fucking time to go to San Francisco. I loved going. I loved seeing my friends there. It was the most fun. The maroon Volkswagen Carmen Ghia convertible that he had. Mm. I don't know what year that was, that but Quentin's car too. Is that the Till nice Bill car? I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. That's a really cool car. Yeah. Nice one. How about Haggis? Apex Mountain for Haggis? Probably. It's Never seen that in another movie. Definitely where I learned about Haggis. Did you ever have a car where, like, if it started, was kind of, like, up for debate every single time? Yeah, and, like, the you fucking had to, like, Saab Turbo. Yeah. It's crooks. Do you miss it? <laughs> I hate Saab. <laughs> it's the reason that company went under. <laughs> the worst car company of all time. Those Saab. crooks. Oh, they were. They were crooks. Yeah. Why were they crooks? Because they made bad cars. I just, I, I was just reading in a novel that was set in the seventies, and this guy, it's like three pages of this guy trying to get his car started. <laughs> I don't, I never think about that anymore. Yeah, it's and I was like, this is so weird. You just press a button and everything starts. But like right. back then, my dad used to have to like pump the gas five times, <laughs> yeah. do the lock three times, yeah. and then pray and then turn the key. I've told you that I, I drove a nineteen eighty Buick Regal to high school. Yeah. for a year, and this is every morning was an adventure. Truly. My dad had an Audi in the 70s that was the same thing. It was like, oh, it started. Yeah. It's like one of those. It <laughs> Harder was, to get the like parts real for drama. those too then. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you'd have like one German guy yeah. in town could do it. Yeah, we hated Audi. We thought Audi was never, and then Audi made this huge comeback. They're, Audis are great now. I've had an Audi. They were not great yeah. in the 70s. I wish, I, I liked aesthetically, I really liked Sobs. Like to look at. Yeah, that's that was how they hooked you in. Like, doesn't this car look nice? I'm like, yeah, it does. Yeah. And it's cheaper than kind BMW. Of Nancy Travis of cars, you know? And then <laughs> all of a sudden, tax murder. <laughs> Crooks. Hey, go go find a sob now. You can't. <laughs> weekly World News. I think this is Apex Mountain for the Weekly World News. Never seen it used better in a movie. Okay. I'll go with that. The Paglia? Probably the TV show. Pregnant man gives birth. These are facts. <laughs> <laughs> How about McEwen's export beer? Yeah, I think that was probably created Eight for Eight bottles? You don't think that was a real beer? The movie? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not I've sure. I've never heard of it. Scottish Weddings? Apex Mountain? Uh, hmm. I, f I feel like there's got to be another memorable moment with men in kilts. Oh, in McEwen's is real. My bad. The Caledonian Brewing Company. Hmm. Shout out to them. That's great. Chris taking more shots at the Scotland, at the Scots. Why don't you just get beer educated? Doesn't exist. You know, get over there, get educated. You spend plenty of time in the UK. How about beat poetry and movies? Woman! <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm Did you ever go see live poetry in your life? I have, yes. But not with the intention of seeing live poetry. With the intention of just being out. Do you think you and I have a close enough relationship that if I was like, Sean, I'm going to read a poem tonight at a, at a cafe, would you come? Uh, I I wouldn't come. No, I wouldn't come. <laughs> I, I would be ask. So, I'd be so mortified. Chris is Chris would is you, doing beat poetry. Would you poetry be like, I have to watch Reptile for a third time? No, like, I, I would only go if Phoebe went. Uh, she would not go because I want to see Phoebe watch you read poetry. No. Have you ever read poetry to a woman? No. No. But you have. No, I haven't. I've read a short. I've read fiction to a woman. Fiction, but not my own. W what did you read? 
I think I read uh like Silence of the Lambs. I read E2. The Exorcist. <laughs> I was like, this is where Shareless goes. <laughs> <laughs> Craig, do you ever read poetry to a woman? Uh no, I have not. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Never done beat poetry. No. Okay. So I don't have any relationship with beat poetry. Slam poetry? No. Slam poetry was what was big when I was yeah, in college. Slam yeah, slam poetry was, at a moment. Yeah. Picking nits. We mentioned Charlie not having a job. The dad says soccer instead of football. I was a little taken aback. Complete bullshit. Yeah, he would say football. What's that about? That was a Myers mistake. What do you mean? It was. A, you think that that was a studio note to, so the audience is going to understand? Well, he's Canadian, so I wonder if I think just he just like fucked soccer it up. And a, yeah, but like, do he's they just say like, soccer in Canada? On. Uh, I don't know. Okay. Who makes someone a health shake as a surprise? That I would just weird. assume my wife was a trying to kill me. A lot of her stuff is weird. He has yeah. reason to be She's suspicious. She's super weird. Yeah. Her health shake also looks like Kool Aid. Yeah. Like yeah. it doesn't look like a, like it went into a. It's also like juice weird. Tiger. Like they, there's like multiple jokes about <clears throat> making healthy drinks. Like, mm. you know, Brenda Flicker's got like the juice. Yeah. The juice ninja. tiger. Yeah. Um, I, uh, along that point, like from a pick and knit, like she's fucking weird. I know she's hot, yeah. but Jesus. Like she's talking about murdering the, on the first date. She's like, uh, what do you mean? Have I ever like brutally yeah, murdered time, somebody? Like, she's just like, why would you say that? I would be like, this, I'm not going to marry you. You're, you're, you're in too, you're too weird. Yeah, I'm, she's been through some serious trauma. She's had three husbands disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you guys are bagging on Nancy Travis. Poor Harriet. Nobody at the wedding from Harriet's side brought up any of the other weddings or yeah. dead husbands never came up even in the reception after when everybody's drinking like hey did you, you know that harriet's been married before there's a lot there's a lot of narrative threading that you could nitpick if about. you're a friend of harriet are you going to wedding number four like how many weddings until you stop going to your friend's wedding I, wow that's a bold question <sighs> i'd go to i go to two like if sean got married five times are you going to all five well you know the thing is i like weddings. julia fox would have like been weddings. a quick I don't, one and i don't necessarily <laughs> want to buy five wedding gifts <laughs> Yeah, make but sure I do enjoy a wedding, uh, even if the first three ended in in death. Have you been to any weddings? Have you been to multiple weddings for any friends? Like more than yeah. Have two? you been to any second weddings? For... No, third is the one that I'm interested. I've in. been to a second wedding, not a third. Third is an in, that's that to me is the the demarcation point. It's like you go to Sean's wedding. It's number three. Yep, <laughs> he's Chastain. marrying Jessica Chastain. Yep, let's go. <laughs> Is she still saying she's 49? Yeah. I say this from the bottom of my heart. If I marry Jessica Chastain, neither of you fucks are invited. <laughs> Come on, really? That's hilarious. <laughs> Just going to be me and Jessica alone. A little soul yeah, yeah. Yeah. She's still good trying to figure out that EGOT. How can we get that? <laughs> I can help her. <laughs> you can help you. I know about Here's the campaigning. What we do for the team. Uh, yeah. That's what I have to offer her. How far away was the honeymoon that Lepaglia had to fly? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's a really good call. It seems like he's it's been just playing a, for a an hour. Right? Yeah, are yeah. they going to Big Sur? Yeah. Like, yeah. The cops get there one minute after he does. Yeah. 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 And I'm like, so you saved a minute by taking the plane. Also, they know the storm is happening, right? Because yeah. he loses power. So he's like, I'm going to fly right into that storm. That's a really weird choice. How, uh, any other pick and nits for you guys? We mentioned a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, like, the Weekly World News really nailed this story. Yeah. Like, how did Underrated. they nail it so well? Good I think reporting. everyone's, you know, one out of a hundred times, it's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sequel, prequel, prestige TV, all black cast are untouchable. All black cast, then, you could talk me into for this. I would mm -hmm. also go untouchable. Mm -hmm. It would be funny if Eddie Murphy had just done this movie and played other parts himself. He was, like, cross between Boomerang and... In this. Nutty Professor. Yeah. 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 It's Eddie Murphy, Nia Long, and Vivica A. Fox as the sister. Yeah. Sounds great. Is this movie better with Wayne Jenkins, Danny Trejo, Catherine Hunt, Steve Buscemi, Sam Jackson, Frank Vincent, JT Walsh, or Philip Baker Hall? I just want to say I can't believe Buscemi wasn't in this movie. It was prime early Buscemi. I could see Buscemi as Tony. Mm hmm That would have been good. Or just like a two minute Buscemi, like as like the Guy who checks him into the hotel. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. Just something. It just feels like he needed to be in this. It's so weird. Do you have other thoughts, Chris? Heed! <laughs> I didn't know I was working with Super Detective Inspector. <laughs> this lassie has a dubious past. <laughs> if she is an axe murderer, then she is going to jail a long fucking time. 
<laughs> Wait, why? Scott, why? Why? Jenkins. Why that is... might be it. We might be done. That hey, might be the last one. Why is Wayne Jenkins? That might be the last one I do. Why, Scottish Wayne. Why is Wayne Jenkins Scott? <laughs> Scottish Wayne Jenkins. Do you want me to do, like, here's the backstory of But, like, we have a cop. Like, he, he could just be Tony Giardino. <laughs> I like Scottish Way <laughs> Jenkins. But there's no lie. Why do I see what it feels like? <laughs> Let the man cook. That's yeah, okay. Jesus. I'm just looking for logic in Wayne Jenkins and I can't find it. That's it? You're retiring Wayne Jenkins? No, I'm okay. just saying. Yeah. I was just like. That could be it. Scottish Wayne Jenkins. A challenge. I don't know how we topped that. Oh, man. I could see Philip Baker Hall in this movie, by the way. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. As Arkin or something like that. It's. I mean, actually, Danny Trejo. Sam Jackson easily could have been in this yeah. movie. Yeah. JT Walsh easily could have yeah. been in this movie. Yeah. It's one of those movies. Just one Oscar who gets it. I guess Myers. Yeah. Is Hartman in it long enough? Would that be the <laughs> shortest? Yeah. I would yeah, actually give clearly. it to Myers for supporting actors for Stewart. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mike Myers Has that Stuart ever McKenzie? been done before? I don't know. Probably not. It's probably illegal. Oh, that's illegal. <laughs> Do you think there's a law? Gavin Pro- Newsom is like I veto this to allow <laughs> yeah. Mike Myers. I'd like to ask the Academy Gavin about Newsom that. Actually. Yeah, you should. Could you be nominated? Could Eddie Murphy have been nominated for one of the Nutty Professor family members? Right. I like the idea of one of those characters being significantly more moving than the other two. You know, like we got to <laughs> give it to him for a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Probably unanswerable questions. Why is Meets of the World completely empty one day and completely packed the like next day? Packed. Incredible question. Packed. Zero people to like 50. Makes no sense. Yeah. And why is she the only person who's working there all the time? Is no it Friday afternoon? I will say McCall's, our beloved McCall's in Los Feliz. Yeah. Is, gets crowded. It gets really crowded on Fridays. Because mm. everybody's like, it's barbecue's time. We got to get all the meats for the weekend. So maybe it was a Friday. What is haggis? This is actually answerable, but I want to go through it. It's the national dish of Scotland. It's a type of pudding composed of the liver, heart, and lungs of a sheep. Mm-hmm. Minced and mixed with beef or mutton suet and oatmeal and seasoned with onion, cayenne pepper, and other spices. The mixture is packed into a sheep's stomach and boiled. Yep. That sounds fucking disgusting. I also don't know if people are like taking out, taking down haggis on like a daily basis. I think it's like an older delicacy. I don't think it's something you just like, did the haggis come in today? Like you probably have to order that, what, four weeks in advance? She's got meats of the world, so she's got... She should have those things if on there's hand. a place that would be carrying it on a regular basis. What I just laid out, is that something you would ever eat in a million years? Would you have one bite Did of Did you that? have haggis when you were at Scotland? I can't remember. I can't imagine I pr- you eating I'm pretty that. sure they put it on the plate one morning because they changed it up every morning. We were there for four nights, so it's possible. I don't know. The, f- the, f- the, the food was pretty intense in Scotland. Any other enhanceables? Best double feature choice of this movie, Chris? I got Rear Window. Another great San Francisco huh. movie. I also had a Hitchcock movie. There's a great Hitchcock movie called Suspicion. Yeah. Starring Cary Grant and Joan kinda, Fontaine. This movie kind of steals very from her, much, right? Very much yeah. based on this about a woman who's married a guy and she's not sure if he's going to kill her. And mm. if they feel very much in conversation with each other. I always like that plot. It's what was that? They tried oh, to do sorry, Bruce not, Willis and Halle Berry that Vertigo. didn't work. Oh, Vertigo. Yeah, yeah that's not San Francisco, though. yeah. What's the one? Bruce Oh, uh, Bruce Willis and Halle Berry? Once they start dating and he thinks, she thinks he's going to kill her. Is that Gothica? No, it's it's like a erotic thriller. Bruce Willis and Harry Berry. Halle Berry. Berry. Halle Berry. Yeah. Hold on. I'm, no, I'm, no. Perfect Stranger? Yeah, Perfect Stranger. Oh, Perfect Stranger. I haven't seen that. I like those where somebody falls for somebody, but guess what? They have a past. Mm. Mm. Oh, they're not who they say they are. Um, I have The Vanishing for Best Double Feature Choice. Mm. Just Travis. four hours of Nancy Travis. <laughs> Let's go. The in, Andy and Red Zawantne Award for what happened the next day. Uh, I think the marriage gets annulled. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, also, there's absolutely zero economic stability to this couple. No. It's like a occasionally packed, but usually empty butcher shop and a poet. The last working poet in America. Silicon Valley comes in and blows these two out. Maybe they get a good They're price. They're living in Sacramento with sharing custody of a kid. 10 well, years from since now. Since Amanda Plummer's character is going to prison, does she get sole ownership of that apartment? Because if so, that's prime real oh, estate. sell that. Maybe she becomes rich, man. What piece of memorabilia would you want from this movie? Uh, I li- really like the Atlantic City poster, but I'll go with the coffee cop at the beginning. Yeah. 
Or the Scottish Wall the of Fame. The coffee cup? The disgustingly cleaned coffee cup? Oh, just like, hey, it's the giant coffee cup. Would, the Scottish Wall of Fame would be pretty cool to just have, like, right That there. would be, you could probably recreate that. Yeah. yeah. There was two pictures I couldn't see. I freeze-framed it. There were two that I just couldn't tell who they were. I want the bagpipes. Mike Myers' car. Uh, Chris always goes for the car. It's like the, of course, the car is the answer. It's the okay, Mike Myers' thing. sports coat. Like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> You guys are getting all punchy. No. Like, like what do you, what's, what's, guys, I guys, guys, Chris? guys, hold it together. It to the world I know side. it's been a long pod. We're going to get through it. <laughs> the coach Finstock award for best life lesson. Get your marriage annulled. If you find out on your honeymoon <laughs> that your spouse was brutally widowed multiple times. Yeah. That's an annulment. Everyone understands. Throw that marriage out. It's a very good take. Who wins a movie? Myers. Well, it's a weird one, right? Because obviously everything he gives the movie makes it so memorable. Yeah. But it bombed and he never made a movie like this ever again. And so can is that a win? I think I maybe, think maybe maybe the producer married Nancy Travis got the mm. win. I do also think though we get the hints of what's to come here. Mm -hmm. So for, on the flip side of that, like it, do you get Austin Powers without this? Without him being like I can do multiple. I think it's a win for him because I think it's his most beloved also, movie. Also like who now. else would win this movie? San Francisco. Oh. Want to do that? Yeah. Does that make you feel better? Solid. Sounds great. We're back We're back to being friends again? Come on. <laughs> My Myers wins the movie. What are we doing? Did you like it? I loved it. You did? I did. I, so, I genuinely enjoyed it. So Craig hadn't seen it. No. And I'm when we shy. told Craig, yeah. when we told Craig that we were doing this, I was like, 100% chance Craig likes this movie. I don't know why it landed with me, but it really did. I, I It's a great concept. I enjoyed like their weird execution of it. I like the... I just think I, th this is the first time I've ever seen Mike Myers is not a character. Yeah. I, it's funny. Thinking about Mike Myers, he has such like a big impact on my life. My friends, like Mike Myers is huge. And it's literally only because of Austin Powers. It's weird yeah. to have somebody with such a, I have, I feel yeah. like I have such a relationship with. And I'm like, to be honest, I've never seen Wayne's World. I've seen the SNL sketches. I've never seen the movies. And it's literally just Austin Powers. Um, yeah. other than like him doing things like Inglorious Bastards. So it's kind of weird that I feel so connected to him, but it just shows how like big of a deal Austin Powers was. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I think I like, I like SNL-y movies where it's like you have the main character and there, and there's just like a bunch of Dion Waiters from that, like yeah. Yeah. that era's comedy universe mixing in. Um, and we don't, there's no, there's no universe anymore. It feels very independent now. And it's mm. like, you don't get the like, oh my God, that guy's doing the three minute scene. And then there's yeah. a four, you know, even in like Happy Gilmore, it's like, oh, the Ben Stiller scene. We don't right. really get that anymore. Yeah. And I think that's why I liked it. But I also what was your single favorite scene? It's the beat poetry, man. It kills me. <laughs> Woman. <laughs> Whoa, man. <laughs> I also think Myers is the, one of the best yellers in comedy history. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's him and Farrell are the two best yellers. Oh Yeah. Pharaoh's probably the champ, but it's like a seven-game series. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, this was fun. The Fat Bastard connections yeah. was great. I, Craig, did you Not also surprised. like that this was, like, probably minus credits, like a cool 88 minutes? Oh, yeah. yeah. 93 minutes total? Craig loves a short movie. Yeah. It's the best. Craig would make the town nine minutes if he had a bigger <laughs> say in the producer. I would. Just be, like, immediately over. 